you for watching This Is Now. Today marks eight months since the Maui wildfires disaster, and this morning, an announcement of a significant gift to the people of Maui from Komar Maui Properties. Now, the company owns a parcel of land near the central Maui landfill in Pu'unene. We are going to donate five acres of our property, which is about 25% of our parcel, as a gift to Maui at the central Maui landfill. Our studies show and the county has already commented that 100% of the fire debris that's currently located in Lahaina and some in Olawalu now can fit into five acres of our land. The goal is to get the folks from Lahaina back home. That's the need. Lahaina needs to get rid of their debris. The county needs five acres, and our company is going to donate that land. This is a significant step in what seems to be an urgent need. Meanwhile, residents have been able to enter the impact zone to visit their properties at a set time, but now those hours have been extended. The County Emergency Management Agency is allowing access from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. This window only applies to those visiting with a re-entry pass. Now, it comes as the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers continues to work to clear properties that have opted into the debris removal program. Access for contractors will continue during daylight hours. Now to some national news. Former President Donald Trump announced today that abortion rights should be left to the states. That offers his clearest stance yet on one of America's most delicate and contentious political issues. Michael Yoshida gives us a look at the latest declaration and how it's being received by both sides of the aisle. We have abortion where everybody wanted it from a legal standpoint. In a video posted to his Truth Social account, former President Donald Trump seeming to punt on the issue of abortion, saying after the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, abortion rights should now be left to the states. Many states will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks or some will have more conservative than others and that's what they will be. At the end of the day, this is all about the will of the people. Trump did not indicate the number of weeks during a pregnancy at which he thinks it would be appropriate to ban an abortion, but he did reiterate his support for certain exceptions, such as victims of rape and incest or when a mother's life is in danger. President Joe Biden attacking Trump's abortion message, accusing the former president of lying and saying in part, Trump is scrambling. He's worried that since he's the one responsible for overturning Roe, the voters will hold him accountable in 2024. Well, I have news for Donald. They will. Trump's video also getting immediate backlash from the leading anti-abortion group Susan B. Anthony Pro-Life America, writing in part, We are deeply disappointed in President Trump's position. Unborn children and their mothers deserve national protections and national advocacy. Democrats also criticizing Trump's latest attempt to clarify his stance. He shouldn't duck this issue. This is an important one for the American public. After appointing three conservatives to the Supreme Court, Democrats have tried to tie Trump to a wave of anti-abortion laws passed since Roe was overturned in 2022. An 81-year-old woman assaulted in Waikiki has died. As Eddie Dowd reports, the suspect appears to be a 73-year-old neighbor. People we talk to who live at the senior apartment complex here in Waikiki tell me they've had had residents who have made threats to one another in the past, but never one that led to an altercation. Where someone later died. According to police records, officers responded to a call for a burglary and assault Wednesday at 1 p.m. at the Ainahau Vista Complex, located on Tusi Tala Street, a block away from the Alawai Canal. According to law enforcement sources, a neighbor found an 81-year-old woman inside her residence seriously injured. Medics rushed her to the hospital in critical condition. I'm shocked. It's a vulnerable seniors that live here. According to the HPD arrest log, a 73-year-old man who also lives at the complex was arrested Friday. He was released pending investigation. Meanwhile, detectives are working to determine if the injuries the victim sustained during Wednesday's assault contributed to her death. One resident who asked to remain anonymous described the woman as very frail. She's physically handicapped like you wouldn't believe. Her, her, all her limbs, her, 
her, her legs are all twisted up. I'm very upset that she passed away because she was a nice woman. She was very handicapped, but she was, wasn't, uh, it wasn't that she was a demanding or anything. She was just a nice lady. Wednesday's attack comes just one week after a brutal stabbing at a complex right next door. On March 27th, a resident manager was allegedly attacked by a tenant armed with a dagger during an argument over loud music. Those incidents are not believed to be connected, but it does have residents on edge. We've been asking the, the, the resident manager uh, to hire a security guard. There's break-ins and yeah, there's, there's other violence too. A property manager at the address declined to comment about the situation. An autopsy for the 81-year-old is scheduled for Monday. Eddie Dowd, Hawaii News Now. Honolulu police are investigating a robbery involving a 13-year-old child. We're told the child was robbed at gunpoint at around 1 p.m. yesterday afternoon in the Aiea area. The suspect had what was described as a black handgun. He demanded the child's property, then ran from the scene. It's not clear what was stolen. So far, no arrests have been made. 25-year-old Kai Dela Cruz has been convicted for the stabbing death of a man in Wahiwa in 2019. Evidence presented at the trial showed Dela Cruz was smoking meth before he killed 45-year-old Isaac Lee at an Ojai Place apartment. He faces a mandatory life sentence with the possibility of parole when he's sentenced in July. On Maui, DLNR enforcement officers arrested 39-year-old Kevin Koi Coates of Kihei after gunshots were heard in the Black Sands area of McKenna State Park last Thursday. Officers say they saw a man running from an overgrown area, get in a car, and drive deeper into the park. Coates had an unloaded semi-automatic pistol, magazine, and one round of ammunition. He now faces five charges, including a felony gun charge. We have a scam alert to pass along. Crooks are posing as police officers, sheriffs, and judiciary employees and claiming that there is a warrant for your arrest for failing to appear for jury duty. If you get a call like this, just hang up right away. Suspicious emails should be deleted without clicking any links or attachments. And you should note court staff will not contact you regarding outstanding bench warrants related to jury duty. Israel has withdrawn a significant number of troops out of Gaza ahead of a new round of negotiations over a ceasefire. Hala Gurani is in Tel Aviv. There are conflicting reports about whether or not we are nearing a ceasefire agreement after weekend talks in Cairo. There were Egyptian media reports suggesting uh, that a deal could be close. However, Hamas representatives who've left the Egyptian capital were quoted as saying that we are not nearing a breakthrough on that front. Uh, meantime, the Israeli military has signaled that its withdrawal of troops from the southern part of Gaza does not mean that it is abandoning plans to mount a ground offensive in Rafah, a ground offensive that the U.S. President Joe Biden opposes. They are saying that they will continue targeted attacks and strikes, even though they don't have ground troops on the ground in the southern part of the enclave. They will concentrate their efforts on the northern part and on securing the separation barrier that bifurcates the uh, Gaza Strip into two halves. Meanwhile, we still have not not seen the opening of new border crossings. This was a promise from the Israeli uh, uh, government of Benjamin Netanyahu following a tense phone call between the American president and Mr. Netanyahu to provide more relief to civilians. And so we're keeping a close eye on when these new aid shipments and aid deliveries might take place. Hala Garani, NBC News. Tel Aviv. Millions of Americans could soon save thousands of dollars in student loan payments if President Biden has his way. But this isn't the first time the president has tried to help borrowers. Nicole Skanga has more. Hello, Wisconsin. President Biden visited the college town of Madison, Wisconsin to roll out a new plan for canceling thousands of dollars of student debt for millions of Americans. The ability for working and middle class folks to repay their student loans has become so burdensome the lot can't repay it for even decades after being in school. This plan focuses on high interest rates, providing relief for borrowers who now owe more than their original loan was worth. 
The loan forgiveness would apply to people who have been paying undergrad loans for 20 years or more, or grad student loans over the last 25 years. It also applies to those already eligible for loan forgiveness and for borrowers who can prove financial hardships prevent them from repaying their loans. I will never stop to deliver student debt relief and hardworking Americans, and it's only in the interest of America that we do it. And again, it's for the good of our economy. It's no coincidence the plan was unveiled in Wisconsin, one of the big swing states this election cycle. Student debt relief is a popular proposal among progressive voters. But some legal challenges are expected. The Supreme Court struck down a previous attempt by the Biden administration to forgive hundreds of millions in student loans. The Supreme Court was very clear in saying that Biden's loan forgiveness policy was an overreach of his executive power and overreach of his authority. This smaller, more targeted plan will still require a months long public comment period before it can take effect, narrowing the chances it will be implemented before Election Day. Nicole Skanga, CBS News, the White House. Shares in former President Trump's media company dropped more than 10% in early trading today. Trump's media plunge followed a 12% decline in its share price on Friday. Now, the stock, which is traded at DJT, had a high price of nearly $80 a share two weeks ago after it began trading as a publicly held company. As of 10:15 Monday morning, it was priced at a little more than $36 per share. Trump Media owns the Truth Social app used by the former president, who is also its biggest shareholder. The risk of wildfires in areas of Hawaii will be above normal in the coming months. A national interagency fire center study says the fire potential in the state is normal this month, but will be elevated from May through July in leeward areas. The national survey highlights locations most likely to see major wildfires. Meanwhile, the Maui wildfire is becoming a case study for many throughout the world. Today, UH's Pacific Disaster Center will host a bilateral exchange with a special delegation from Ghana. The goal is to share the latest innovations in disaster risk reduction and climate change analysis. During the visit, delegates will visit Maui and meet with the MFD crews to better understand the challenges they faced last August. More possible protection for Papahanao Mokuakea if it shifts from a protected marine monument to a sanctuary. The state and NOAA will be holding several meetings throughout Oahu this week for public input on the proposed National Marine Sanctuary. The first meeting is today at Aloha Towers starting at 5 p.m. For more details on the dates and locations of these meetings, head to our website, hawaiinewsnow.com. Millions of spectators across the country eagerly awaited today's celestial sensation, a total eclipse of the sun. In Hawaii, a partial eclipse was first spotted from East Oahu just before 7 a.m. The eclipse began at approximately 6.33 in the morning and peaked at 7.12 a.m. and lasted just before 8 a.m. I had seen totality in 2017 and it was really, really, really awesome. And so I just didn't want to miss it. And my dad worked for NASA and he has passed away now. So it's kind of a family thing where we're kind of these, you know, junkies about seeing the eclipses and you know, all things with the moon and the sun and that, that kind of thing. So I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss it. I thought it was totally cool. It was worth it. It was worth coming out early morning and um, joining the, all the other people that came out. And uh, it was worth ordering the glasses and getting them and being able to see the, see, see the sunblock. It was awesome. New York was one of 15 states in the path of totality. Jared Hill reports. A moment of awe as the solar eclipse cast darkness over daytime. The Southwest got the first glimpse. It got dark real quick and lightened up pretty neat. 31 million people live in the path of totality for this once in a generation marvel where the moon blocks out the sun. Crowds at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway enjoyed the greatest spectacle in the sky. Even though we knew what to expect, what to expect, it was just mind blowing. In Russellville, Arkansas, more than 350 couples took the celestial cue and tied the knot sealing it with an eclipse. It just seemed really fun and something unique. NASA estimated about 99% of people in the U.S. could see at least a partial eclipse, making this event the ultimate water cooler experience. Even scientists emphasize the social impact. It's far more about inspiration, awe, 
and joy for humanity. It's an event that just makes you feel a lot of things. The name of the viewing game today was cloud cover, with New England having the least of it, making for the best line of sight in America. With three or four minutes of peace and awe, it's the last total solar eclipse in the continental U.S. until 2044. Jared Hill, CBS News, New York. Very cool, and thank you to everyone who's sending your eclipse pictures into our news email. We really appreciate them. Uh, let's take a live look outside now. This is New York City. That's Lady Liberty off there in the distance. Uh, New York, again, once of the states in the path of totality, 60 degrees there in the Big Apple. We're going to have what your week forecast looks like here in the islands with Guy Hagi after this quick break. <laughs> it on this Monday. The weather's going to be pretty nice for the next few days. We still have breezy winds today, but they'll be slowing down by the uh, by the middle of the week. And in fact, maybe towards the end of the week, another disturbance will drop in from the northwest. We could see some heavy rainfall for Kauai and Oahu uh, sometime between Thursday and Friday. Again, heavy rainfall possible for the west end of the state Thursday, Friday. Until then, we'll, we'll see just a few wind wind and mocha showers. Cloudy on Hawaii Island this morning, but still fairly dry, safe for some windward showers. And those winds will be running brisk and breezy today from Maui to Kauai, about 15 to 25, but they are in the process of slowing down. So it is going to be a nice day today. We're going to start out a little cloudy, a little damp for a handful of windward areas. Lots of afternoon sunshine, though. And those winds, well... Oh. 15 to 25 miles an hour. So the ocean's still going to be choppy. There's a small craft advisory posted, but the high surf advisory for east shores has been dropped as the waves start to drop. The northwest swells are pretty much done for the winter surf season, although we got a small bump coming in today. So the weather's going to be pretty nice, at least through Wednesday. But remember, there's a disturbance that's approaching. It's going to first cut off the wind, so light winds due on Wednesday. It could bring some heavy rainfall, mainly to Kauai and Oahu between Thursday and Friday and then things settle down as we head into the weekend. The 61st annual Merry Monarch Festival may be over, but many are still talking about their favorite performances. Mahilani Richardson and Dylan Anchetta caught up with the overall winners. It is the second year in a row for Kalao Nohimai Ohae Hae for overall winners of the Merry Monarch Festival with Naokumu, Tracy, and Keave Lopez. We were just here last year. Now you're here again. What was it like to hear your name for the second year in a row? Very, very humbling and 
just so grateful and thankful to our Lord for bringing us through all of Everything. the journey yeah, the in, in life, in hula, with all of these beautiful faces that trust us to teach them what we love so much, hula, and binding us together even stronger as a family. And just we're just so feel so very blessed and grateful for there's this. So many, um, there's so many that um, pieces that go into just the seven minute performance on the stage. And the journey is more the gift than anything else. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's individual journey and our, gener our, ge our journey as a collect, you know, as a whole. Um, it's just, and all the supporters. I mean, we have kahu that surround us with prayer. We have family that come and make sure that we're okay. Whatever is the foundation. The research just brings everything to life. And, and even just the the prayer and the inspiration that comes and it's just I mean, yeah we met in a Hawaiian language class so <laughs> we met in yeah. Hawaiian language class oh. so we just celebrated our 25th anniversary, <laughs> anniversary. Yeah. anniversary. happy anniversary yeah. happy belated birthday yeah. happy yes. birthday too yes. 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 happy 30 year Miss Alohula anniversary oh. as well <laughs> oh beautiful yeah. ladies and gentlemen these are your over winners for the 61st annual Merry Monarch Hula Festival. Hello, hello, onohi mai o. And really quickly, I have to give some love to Karen Kiawe Hawaii. Come on! Come on! She's my idol. Yay! Again, congratulations. And uh, go enjoy yourselves. Get some rest. Reporting from the Edith Kanako Ole Stadium, we're from Hilo Diddle and Acheta. It's been an honor. I'm Mahia Lenny Richardson. Back to you. Thanks, guys. Meanwhile, Billy V has more on this year's Merry Monarch results. Let's take a look at just a few of the other results from last night. Second place overall went to Halau Kalei Mukihana Olena Ala under the direction of Lena Ala Pavao Jardine. The ladies from the island of Kauai took second Wahine overall, second Awana, and second Kahiko last night. And third place overall went to Hula Halau O Kamuela under the direction of Kunevamuk and Kaui Onalani Kamanao. The ladies from Kalihi and Waimanalo took fourth in Awana, first in Kahiko, and third Wahine overall. And for the men, Halau Hi. Iaka in Makalehua took first place overall for the Kane. And on the Wahine side, congratulations to, of course, Kala Onohi Mai O Hae Hae. Head on over to our website for all of the information and all the things Merry Monarch Festival. Billy V, Hawaii News Now. And heads up, if you're traveling out of Hilo today, the Hawaii Department of Transportation says if you're leaving the Merry Monarch Festival, you need to plan ahead. The state is expecting a high volume of traffic today and is advising travelers to arrive at the airport three hours before their flight to make sure they have enough time. Well, Beyonce is making music history again. She became the first black woman to top the country album's chart with her new release, Act Two, Cowboy Carter. The new collection of songs also tops the Billboard 200 album's chart. That is the eighth time Beyonce has achieved that feat. Two months ago, she also made history when one of her debut singles from her new album, Texas Hold'em, captured the top spot on the Billboard's Hot Country Songs chart. Time for some good news. A British man is taking the concept of running for charity to a whole new level, completing a year-long quest to run the length of Africa. He hit 16 countries in 352 days, and as Ian Lee reports, he faced more than just tired legs along the way. True grit and perseverance fueled Russ Cook over the finish line. The 27-year-old from England ran across Africa from south to north, a 10,000-mile journey taking him through jungles and deserts. He even faced an armed robbery and a kidnapping along the way. The scariest moment was uh, in the Congo when I was on the back of a motorbike thinking I was about to die. <laughs> Cook documented his dangerous and draining trip on Instagram, earning the nickname the hardest geezer. Hey, you're getting hit with it on a sandstorm this morning, sucking oxygen. Chew it south for breakfast. 
They try to get me good, but they just can't. Inspiring and inviting folks from around the world to join him, like American Blake Warren. I was laying on my couch. It was a Sunday afternoon, and I saw it. And he said, everybody can come. I literally got on Skyscanner. I looked for a ticket. And 20 minutes later, I bought the ticket, and here I am. Cook raised nearly a million dollars for homeless young people and clean water for Africa, as well as a possible place in the record books. Got to get it done, and the only way out is the end. Cook ended his run, taking a dip in the Mediterranean. I'm a bit tired. <laughs> and downing a strawberry daiquiri to mark his sweet success. Oh, thank you, sir. Ian Lee, CBS News, London. All right, thank you for watching. This is now more news first at four on KHNL. Mahalo.